We want right. to continue the conversation. What's really driving these wild swings like we talked about over the weekend? We want to bring in Anthony Pompilano. He is in, a partner at Pomp Investments. So, Anthony, give us a little bit of insight into what you make of these wild swings, like today with the 9% drop, and then like the drops we've seen over the weekend only to rebound during the week. Give us some insight. If you want to play this, how do you do it, and how, are, how do you potentially be a little bit more careful around that volatility? Yeah, look, I think that we're talking about a volatile asset here. And so uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are, frankly, the last free market left, right? If you think of the stock market as a comparison, uh, there's hours of operations, there's circuit breakers, uh, there's quite a bit of manipulation uh, from a monetary policy standpoint. And so when you start to look at these free markets that trade 24-7, 365, you're going to have volatility. And then obviously you trade in off hours for an equity market. And so I think that some of this is just uh, people who are coming into the space understanding uh, this actually isn't that volatile, right? Over the this past week, we've had a 9% drawdown in a single day, but we also had a day where it was up 11%. And so volatility works both ways. You just have to understand that this asset is not like a traditional equity. Um, and if you understand that and you want to go trade it, knock yourself out. But most people in the space who have done pretty well end up being long-term holders. Over 50% of all Bitcoin hasn't moved in the last 12 months. And I tend to think that most people start out as traders. They think they're going to get rich quick, but very quickly they realize that that volatility can work against them and they become long-term holders. Anthony, I got to ask you because it's we're going into a long weekend, of course, and you're going to have get-togethers as people are starting to reemerge. And I feel like they're going to want to be talking about Dogecoin. I'm sorry, this just seems like so silly to me. It started as a joke, but it's a real currency. People are trading real money. What's going on in the action there? I mean, is this a real, a, a real play that we should be considering if we're interested in crypto? Yeah, again, it goes back to are you trying to be a trader or are you trying to be a long term investor, right? And so uh, before I came on, I actually tweeted and said Berkshire Hathaway is a meme stock for the generation of people who grew up without cell phones. Today, we've got things like GameStop, AMC, Dogecoin, et cetera. And so meme stocks or meme assets aren't new. They've been around for a really long time. Uh, but if you go into those assets, you have to understand that uh, they don't have the underlying fundamentals in many cases that you would have in something that's much more sound like Bitcoin that you can hold over a long period of time. And so if you want to go trade, knock yourself out. There, there's plenty of alpha to be generated uh, by people who know what they're doing. But if you're not a trader, stop trying to trade. Just buy the assets, hold them over a long period of time. And I think that crypto is going to end up being kind of the judge, the jury, and the executioner for financial markets over the next decade. You're either going to be in crypto markets or you're going to be out of them. And if you're out of them, I think your returns are going to lag behind those that are in. And so that's ultimately going to be one of the intelligence tests for financial markets this decade is how quickly do large asset managers get into the space, get exposure, and then just allow the tailwind to take over. Victoria, jump on in here. Yeah, so I just have a quick question, Anthony. I mean, if someone had asked me two years ago about Bitcoin or crypto, I would have said it was a fad, right? And obviously it's not. It's here to stay. We even have central banks now looking at, at how they can do digital currency. But, you know, we're long-term fundamental equity investors at Crossmark. And so we look at balance sheets. We look at business models. We look at their growth potential to see if we want to invest in something. How do I evaluate a crypto, a Bitcoin, an Ethereum to really do true fundamentals and see if it matches my portfolio. So I'll talk about Bitcoin. That's what I spend the most time on. Um, if you think of Bitcoin today, uh, it's doing an annualized $6.5 trillion of on-chain transaction volume. It's about 50% of Visa's transaction volume. Uh, if you look at something like minor revenue, it's doing anywhere between 35 to $45 million a day in revenue to the people who run that network. And then when you just look over a decade at the compound annual growth rate, it's topping out somewhere between 150 and 200%, depending on the price of Bitcoin in a given day. And so when you start to look at the long-term trends, you start to look at the underlying fundamentals. You also look at things like the hash rate continuing to hit all-time high after all-time high, active wallet addresses, new users signing up at the various brokerages. Every single fundamental points to this is not only something that uh, is here to stay, but it's actually something that is still very early in its life cycle and has a lot of growth left to run. And so I think that you've got to be careful trying to compare it directly to, let's say, a SaaS business or something like that. But there's definitely things that you can look at, some of what I mentioned, uh, that can give you a sense for just value uh, and those underlying fundamentals and how they're going to increase the value over time. Thank you, Anthony, for joining us. And Victoria, I like your question, too, about the fundamentals. That's sort of how I think of all this. I want a fundamental reason to own something like this. Delano, bottom line this for us. What should we do with crypto? 
Uh, I think Anthony hit it on the head. Um, there's going to be some people that trade and there's going to be some people that look at, you know, the cryptocurrency fundamentals and believe in it long term. And I think that's where I stand uh, for myself and clients. And if you're, you're looking at it from different ways, um, it'll, it'll, time will tell in, in a space like this. It's fairly new. Uh, but I think, you know, for, for all investors, it, it's really interesting at this point.